Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if you can actually fix a broken plate with milk. And then if that doesn't work, I'm going to be seeing if I can actually make my own plate out of milk and even make a cup out of milk. Because it'd be really cool if I could take a drink of milk with a cup made out of milk. Okay, so I'm doing this video because I've had a lot of requests to see if you can actually fix broken china with warm milk ever since this video went viral on Facebook where it showed somebody taping the crack up and then putting the plate in warm milk and then waiting for two days and they pull it out, pull off the tape and the plate has magically come back as a normal plate, no cracks in it whatsoever. So I'm going to see if that actually works and if it doesn't, I want to make the impossible become possible and see if I can take it even a step further and make my own plate out of milk itself. Okay, so first we need to break our plate. So I want to try to get as clean a break as possible. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but let's see what happens. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, that was pretty good. Four pieces. Okay, now we need to tape it together, and what better to tape it with than the Action Lab branded tape. Here we go. So if you're wondering where I got this tape, this is the tape that came in the first Action Lab subscription box. Okay, good as new, look at that. <laughs> this is actually pretty cool. It would actually be pretty cool to get a whole dinner set that looked like this. This is a pretty cool plate. So my wife was pretty reluctant to let me use one of our nice plates to do this experiment, so I'm gonna go tell her that I fixed the plate. <laughs> I fixed your plate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so now we just need to add warm milk. Here we go. Okay, it's completely submerged. Now, according to this Facebook video I saw, they had to leave it in there for two days. So let's leave it here and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Ew. Okay. This is looking promising. Let's peel off our tape. And are they sealed? <laughs> nope. <laughs> of course it isn't sealed. So is there anything behind this video? Why would somebody ever think that you could seal something with milk? Well, we can actually fish a little bit of science out of this stupid video. Milk has a specific protein in it called casein, and it comprises around 80% of the protein in milk. For humans, it's around 50%. So what I'm going to be trying to do today is instead of trying to fix this broken plate with milk, I'm going to actually be trying to make a plate and a cup out of milk. And the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be pouring acid in the milk and the acid should denature the protein in there called casein. And the casein should denature and instead of being folded, it'll kind of string out more. And so all of the protein molecules can kind of all get linked together and cross together. And then I'm going to dry it out and it should become very strong after that. Hopefully strong enough that I can have an actual plate that I can eat off of after. Okay, so how I'm gonna get the casein out of this is I'm just going to pour this vinegar in it and the vinegar is going to denature the protein. Okay, so picture that this is our protein. Now the protein is made up of little tiny links of amino acids. So amino acids are small molecules and they're all linked together in this protein chain. And the way the amino acids link together cause there to be electric charges on the molecule, the big protein molecule, and so it kind of forms its own structure. 
So what it means is this long chain of amino acids, due to the electric charges on the molecules, it kind of spaces out into this interesting pattern. This would be called kind of an alpha helix. So that initial chain of the amino acids, it's called its primary structure. And then they can fold together into these secondary structures. So it has this interesting folding pattern here. But then these can actually group together in different patterns. So let's say I had another one here, they would group together in different patterns and that's called a tertiary structure. And this protein folding is really important in your body. It's really important in nature. And the way the proteins fold themselves is very dependent on the pH of whatever they're in. So if you add some extra hydrogen ions in there due to adding an acid, what you can do is you can basically get this whole thing to just unfold. So it's being held together through these electric charges, but let's say everywhere you had a positive charge, you now add a negative charge, and everywhere you had a negative charge, you add a positive charge, and you just kind of neutralize the whole thing. Well, it's not gonna keep this structure. It's just going to kind of spread out and go back to how it was before. And so it's going to get really long like this. And what happens when they stretch out and like this is they get really long. So now they can all get tangled together. So they can all get wrapped around each other. So, so before these proteins were grouped in kind of these tertiary protein structures that were very small in size. But then once you put an acid in, you spread them all out and they all get tangled together and they clump together. So that's what's gonna happen with our milk here. Okay, let's put in about a half a cup of vinegar. So you can see after a while, it starts to separate like this. And I should mention that if you're gonna try to do this, remember to use warm milk. It helps the reaction happen faster. So you can see it's completely chunky now. That's because these long strings have all gotten tangled together and they form these big clumps now. So now I'm gonna filter off this extra liquid and I just want the casein. So you'll notice this is very similar to the cheese making process and also making yogurt is similar to this. But notice how I made it very quickly, but when you make cheese or yogurt, it kind of takes some time. And the reason is because when you make yogurt or cheese, you're actually using bacteria and yeast. And the bacteria and yeast get in the milk and they do some reactions in there that form an acid or a base. And that acid and base is what actually um, denatures the protein. But in this case, I just use vinegar. Okay, now we just pack all this together. So this is going to turn out being my plate here. Then this is going to be my cup. Okay, now I'm just gonna put it in my oven and try to dry out some of the liquid that's in there. Okay, now after letting it dry, here it is, my milk plate. So it turned a little more yellow than I would have liked, and to get it to match a real plate, I touched it up with a little glossy white to make it more plate-like. But you can see how hard this is. It's really cool. So this is basically just like a plastic now. Okay, let's see how easy this is to break. See, I can't bend it. I could probably break it if I tried really hard, but it's pretty sturdy. Okay, so my cup at this point is pretty pathetic, but I'm gonna go ahead with it because I really wanted to drink some milk out of a cup made out of milk. Okay, so I will be eating cheese and crackers on a plate made of milk. Okay, drinking milk out of milk. Oh, it's leaking. So the fact that I was able to make a plate out of milk is actually pretty interesting and it's not as odd as you think because people have been making plastic type materials out of milk since the early middle ages. We found that there were people who used casein to make wood glues or even ceramic like materials. 
Another thing that casein is used for is as an additive for paint because it makes paint dry quicker. In fact, Andy Warhol used casein to paint with. In fact, casein has actually been used in the textile industry. So casein has been combined with wool fibers, cotton, and even rayon. So it's a really cool biopolymer that we can make that actually ends up being edible. So even though this is kind of a dumb experiment to try to glue a plate together with milk, it's actually kind of cool at the roots of it. I'm sure that's not what they were thinking, but the casein in milk is actually useful as a biopolymer. Okay, so you can see all this liquid left over. So this isn't just water in here, although a lot of it is water. The rest of it left over is called whey protein. So this is the whey that's left over after milk curdles. But the proteins left in the whey are called globular proteins. And they're a little bit different than casein. They're more water soluble, so they stick with the water instead of forming clumps like the casein did. Hey everyone, thanks for watching again. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out. And head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't yet to check out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.